This is how I started my raised bed vegetable garden from start to finish. These beginner tips can help you begin your own small space vegetable garden. There's nothing better than eating a fresh tomato straight from your garden or making delicious pesto from the basil growing on your windowsill. I vividly remember the time when the seven-year-old me sat in my mom's backyard, munching on the green beans growing in the garden. They tasted absolutely delicious and sweet. It was the sweetness of those beans that has stayed with me throughout these years. I wanted to experiment growing vegetables and part of me also wanted to give my twins a similar experience that my own mom gave me. If you have a small space and are overwhelmed to start the garden, this video is for you. I hope this garden inspires and motivates you to start a little garden of your own. Even if it is on your kitchen windowsill, picking the right location. In June 2020, I designed a modern cottage garden for my new home with no plans of a vegetable garden. The only thing I wanted added was a small space for a herb garden, but we could not add it as it was not flowing well with the design. I had planted lavenders in this area because I wanted them to complement the beautiful pink climbing roses that I had planted behind them. But over the winter of 2021, I lost about six to seven lavender plants. And I had to make a decision. Should I plant more lavenders in the clay soil that the lavenders weren't happy with? Or should I add raised beds, which would allow me to add herbs and more flowers to this area? I went with the raised beds. I took it as an opportunity and planted tulip bulbs and various edible and ornamental pollinator flowers that I grew from seed. I wanted to plant flowers and herbs that would help and support the native diversity of my vegetables and plants in the garden. Types of containers. I went with two by four beds because they would fit in this narrow space of the garden between the tiles and the fence. They would also give me a good amount of space to test out my garden. I had also studied the patterns of how the sun moved through my backyard. Although I got full sun during the summer months, the winter months on this north facing yard barely got any sunshine. When I started my vegetables in March and April, my backyard had just started getting full day sun, about six to eight hours of direct sunlight per day. I used larger raised beds than just using multiple containers because I wanted to minimize my setup for irrigating water to the plants. As this is California, I wanted to be judicious with watering my garden and went with drip irrigation. This would prevent water wastage and help me water the plants consistently every day, even on the days I was busy and would not be able to come to the garden. We also get very little rain, so I couldn't be dependent on the rains for watering my garden. I would have loved to install a rainwater harvesting system if we got regular rains, but unfortunately that didn't seem like a viable option in terms of cost benefits growing the right varieties. It was so tempting to start planting all the seeds I found in a seed catalog or something recommended by one of my friends for their garden. I thought a better way to start is by looking at what we actually ate during the week and go from there. I also took this a step further and prioritized the vegetables that I was spending the most on every week. I live in zone 10A here in the US, so I have a larger planting window than most people. But we are also going through a drought here in California, so I wanted to pick varieties that wouldn't require a lot of water. Being a beginner gardener, I didn't want to make the mistake of planting too much. I was realistic in terms of my own expectations of how much time I would get to take care of them and also be able to accommodate any travel that I might need to do during summer. Managing expectations. As a beginner gardener, I didn't want to get overwhelmed with multiple varieties and their growth habits. Instead, I focused on the vegetables that we would eat every day and that would actually get used in my kitchen recipes. I also wanted to have fun in the process and didn't want to get discouraged in growing some of the difficult vegetables. Planning the garden layout. I had a rough garden plan before I started planting. I had planned to plant 
all the tall, indeterminate tomato plants on the north side, right along the fence. I created a vertical garden support system using my fence so I could grow them in a small space. My goal was to utilize almost every square inch of the soil in those raised beds. If you are creating a garden layout, try to keep the vegetable planters or raised beds closest to your garden or paths that you frequently use. As my raised beds are directly out Outside my kitchen, I find it easy to walk to the beds every morning and evening to check on the plants. Soil quality. I used an organic potting soil mix to fill up the raised beds. If I had to fill more beds or deeper beds, the one thing I would do differently is to add fillers lining the base. Some of the fillers that you can use are cardboards, old newspapers, old cuttings from your other plants in the garden, etc. I used mycorrhizal fungi in the holes that I made to transplant my seedlings. If I direct seeded the plants, I fertilized them after I saw the true leaves of the plant with a diluted mixture of sea kelp and water. Permaculture and polyculture planting. Polyculture planting is when you mix many types of plants in one space. Initially, the reason I decided on this approach was because I was short of space, having only three two by four feet raised beds. But I love this approach as it helped me manage the plants a lot better with fewer pesticides, even if I was only using organic pesticides. Interplanting companion plants like marigold, lavender, oregano, calendula, even basil helped a ton with managing pests. As I was growing in a relatively small amount of space, I wanted to maximize the use of my garden bed space and use every single inch that was available to me. That meant that when I saw any gaps in between the plants, I started adding either herbs like cilantro, basil, rosemary, oregano, and lemongrass in them. Or I added annual flowers like nasturtium, bachelor's buttons, calendula, and marigolds. I wanted to integrate different layers of textures, colors, and smells in this tiny little space. Permaculture is a gardening system that is inspired by nature. It teaches you on how to work with rather than against nature. It helps you in creating a framework for a garden that has systems put into place that work with each other. I like to think of gardening in terms of that everything that I would put into my garden is going to give me back something in return. It might be in terms of produce, like vegetables and fruits. It might be flowers that I can eat or just give me joy when I bring some into my home. But finally, and most importantly, I think it might also teach me something. Like the fact that I interplanted basil with my tomatoes led to reduced hornworms on my tomatoes. Or the fact that I can add nasturtiums to pull aphids away from my kale and arugula. One of the biggest challenges for me as a beginner vegetable gardener was analysis paralysis of the gorgeous and beautiful varieties of vegetables available on the market. The way I decided to overcome that was by choosing only the vegetables we actually ate every day. Vegetable gardening has been such a joyous and fun-filled activity for me and my children this year. I have loved learning from what I can grow, how I can grow it better, and what I should or should not do for next year. Just remember that nobody gets it right the first time. And the only way to do it better is to just start doing it. I hope this video helped you in giving you inspiration to start your own vegetable garden. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much everyone and have an amazing, amazing day. Bye-bye.